This is the dim bulb tester I made. I used some parts from the vintage appliance tester, which I got at local flea market. The dim bulb tester lets you try out your equipment, for instance, old tube radio, under safe conditions, and see whether it has a short circuit. If your radio has a short circuit, the dim bulb tester will simply light up the bulb, instead of damaging the radio. The dim bulb tester is a safety and handy gadget, and you should have it on your workbench. Let's take a look in more detail about dim bulb tester I made. This is a schematic diagram of the dim bulb tester I made. The circuit is fairly simple, and quite easy to make. As the diagram shows, the dim bulb tester puts an incandescent light bulb, between the AC power in the wall, and the test load, in order to provide a basic current limitation. This way, if your equipment connected to the test load, has a short circuit, this tester will simply light up the bulb, instead of damaging your equipment. There is a mode switch in this tester. When you test your equipment, this switch should be test positions first, in another words, dim position. And then, once you have confirmed your equipment has no short circuit, you can change the mode switch to operate or full load position. Next, let's see how to choose the wattage of the incandescent bulb. You must choose an incandescent light bulb of the correct wattage, when using this tester. I would like to give you some examples. I have a tube radio. It's about 30 watts. And there are three different bulbs, 40, 60, and 100 watts for the tester. First, let's see what happens, when you put a 40 watt bulb in the tester and try to power the radio. The 40 watt bulb glows, but the radio doesn't play. This is not a sign of problems but the wattage of the bulb is simply too small. The digital meter indicates 190 milliampere and 22.7 watts.
Next, let's see what happens in case of 60 watt bulb in the tester. The 60 watt bulb glows dimly and I can barely hear the sound of the radio. The bulb shines a little more brightly during that warm-up period. The digital meter indicates 240 milliampere and 27.2 watts. The final example uses a 100 watt bulb. The ball barely glows, but you can't see it through the camera. The radio plays normally. The digital meter indicates 250 milliampere and 29.1 watts. When you turn the MO switch from test to operate position, The meter indicates 300 milliamperes and 32.9 watts. From these results, the wattage of the incandescent light bulb should be between 60 to 100 watts for the test of 30 to 40 watts tube radios. I'll give you another example. I have a soldering iron. According to this spec, it's 80 watts. Let's see what happens with 100 watt bulb in the tester. When I plug the soldering iron into the tester, the bulb glows brightly and the digital meter indicates 420 milliamperes and 50 watts. This is not a problem. The tester is just working as a current limiter. When I am ready to use this iron, throw the switch to the full position. See the meter, it indicates 600 milliamperes and 70.4 watts. The iron should heat to full operating temperature in just a few seconds. When finished with the iron for a while, place it back on its stand and throw the switch back to the dim position without fear of overheating. By using the dim bulb tester, you can check your equipment without fear of blowing the line fuse in case of accidental short. The dim bulb tester is a safety and handy gadget. I recommend that you should have it on your workbench.